Sydney Cancer Genetics explains bowel cancer and tumour testing for Lynch syndrome. Hi, I'm Dr Hilda High, a genetic oncologist. I work with Sydney Cancer Genetics at the Sand Clinic at the Sydney Adventist Hospital in Warunga, Sydney, Australia. This presentation is about bowel cancer, how it develops, what the lifetime risk of getting bowel cancer may be, and ways to reduce that risk. We'll also talk about why and how we test the cancer itself, looking for clues as to whether it arose because of a fault in a gene associated with Lynch syndrome. Finally, we'll explain who should see a genetic oncologist or hereditary cancer clinic and how to go about that. This diagram from the Journal of Oncology shows the large bowel, also known as the colon. It starts here where it joins to the small bowel, near the appendix, and finishes where the rectum joins to the anus. Doctors usually refer to bowel cancer as colorectal cancer. So how do bowel cancers develop? Most bowel cancer develops from a cell in the inside lining of the bowel. These two purple squiggles are meant to represent the bowel. These lining cells are constantly being replaced and they do this by making a complete copy of themselves. Mistakes in the genetic code, or DNA, can occur and if not found and fixed can build up over time. If these mistakes occur in an important gene, such as a growth gene or a cancer protection gene, the cell stops behaving like a bowel cell. The first change is often that it grows when it shouldn't, causing a polyp. A polyp can be flat, or more like a mushroom on a stalk. As the cells in the polyp continue to grow, more mistakes in the DNA can occur, and if there are enough mistakes in important genes, a cancer develops. A cancer is a cell that grows when it shouldn't, doesn't die when it should, and can move to other places in the body. It no longer behaves at all like a bowel cell. Our lymph nodes act like sieves, catching any cancer cells that may have made their way outside the bowel. They are part of our immune system and are skilled at detecting and destroying cancer cells. When a bowel cancer is removed during surgery, some of the nearby lymph nodes are also removed. The pathologist will look very carefully at these nodes and if cancer is found, it's referred to as node positive disease. It's important to note that this is not metastatic disease and is very often curable. However, because the cells have demonstrated an ability to move, different chemotherapy regimens may be recommended for node-positive disease. So what is the risk of bowel cancer? Well, like most cancer, bowel cancer tends to occur at an older age. For men, the lifetime risk is 10% and for women, it's around 7%. Bowel cancer is the second biggest cancer killer for both men and women in Australia. However, there is good screening to prevent bowel cancer occurring or to find a cancer when it is still small and easy to treat. The cells in polyps and bowel cancers aren't as robust as the healthy cells lining the bowel and are more likely to bleed. Very small amounts of blood can be released into the stool or faeces and can be detected via a special test called the Fecal Occult Blood Test. It's recommended that everyone over the age of 50 performs this simple test every year. A positive test does not mean that you have a bowel cancer. However, if the test is positive, a colonoscopy should be performed to look for and remove any polyps before they can become a cancer. Some bowel cancers are caused by a fault in a cancer protection gene. We all get two copies of these genes, one from our mother and one from our father, and usually they are working just fine. Their job is to look for and fix the kind of spelling errors that can build up in the DNA of cells over time. In some rare cases, there's a fault in one of these cancer protection genes that's being passed down through the family. We call it a germline genetic mutation. Lynch syndrome is an example of an inherited cancer syndrome. It's caused by a fault in a mismatch repair gene. There are four of these genes, and they make proteins called the mismatch repair proteins. These proteins act like spell checkers, looking for and fixing mismatches between the paired strands of DNA. If they're not working properly, mistakes can build up faster and cancers can occur at a younger age, and more than one cancer may even occur in the same person. Lynch syndrome is associated with a significantly increased risk of bowel cancer. We used to think it was much higher, perhaps 50 to 80% over a lifetime. This was due to something that's called ascertainment bias. All the families in the early studies were found or ascertained because they had bowel cancer, so not surprisingly the rates of bowel cancer were very high. 
Now that we've been able to test people in families with Lynch syndrome, we've found individuals who carry the genetic mutation but who haven't had a cancer. Lynch syndrome is also associated with increased risks for uterine and ovarian cancer in women. Please see our presentation on ovarian cancer for more information. There are some cancers that even though the risk is increased in Lynch syndrome, remain uncommon and at this time no specific screening is recommended for most families. As we mentioned before, most bowel cancer starts from a polyp. The type of polyps and the number gives a clue as to whether an inherited cancer syndrome may be present. For example, in familial adenomatous polyposis, or FAP for short, a mistake in the APC gene means that hundreds or even thousands of polyps may occur at a very young age. When it's not possible to remove all of the polyps, the whole colon needs to be removed in order to prevent a cancer from occurring. The lifetime risk of bowel cancer in these families is almost 100% if the colon's not removed. In the past, Lynch syndrome was called hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer to help differentiate it from FAP. There are other syndromes associated with special types of bowel polyps, but we won't go into those in detail here. In colon cancer, we're lucky in that we can test the tumour to get some clues as to whether an inherited cancer syndrome has caused the problem. Special immunohistochemical stains have been developed to colour cells that contain the, the mismatch repair proteins. It's recommended the pathologist stains a small amount of tissue from all bowel cancers, regardless of age or family history. If the staining is negative, this is a clue that one of the Lynch syndrome genes isn't working properly. It's not a diagnosis though. For example, the MLH1 protein is often missing in tumours from older patients. In this case, other tests may need to be done. When reading a pathology report, just remember that if the gene isn't working, the protein isn't made, and so the staining will be negative, that is, missing. Here's a picture of mismatch repair immunohistochemistry staining to show you what I'm talking about. These slides were provided by the pathology department at the Sydney Adventist Hospital in Warunga, Sydney, and they show a small amount of tissue from an actual bowel cancer. On this side, you can see that there's this dark staining in the cells of the tumour, or the cancer. This is normal. It's telling us that this particular mismatch repair protein is present. On this side, the stain was done for a different mismatch repair protein, and this is negative in that there is no staining of the tumour. Those little dots that you can see are actually normal cells, lymphocytes in this case, and they do take up the stain and they're a nice internal control to tell us that the stain test has actually worked. So who should see a genetic oncologist or a hereditary cancer clinic? Well, your GP, surgeon or other doctor should make a referral if the cancer occurred at a younger than expected age or if there was loss of staining, as we've discussed. The number or types of polyps and the age at which they occurred are also important clues. So if polyps occur before the age of 30, if there are lots of polyps, or if there are special types of polyps present, all of these should indicate a referral. Because uterine cancer is associated with Lynch syndrome, if a uterine cancer occurs under the age of 50, this should be discussed with your GP, surgeon or other doctor. Family history is also important, although lack of a strong family history doesn't exclude an inherited cancer syndrome. However, if you have close relatives, two of whom have had bowel cancers where one occurred under the age of 50, or three relatives with cancers belonging to the Lynch syndrome, such as bowel, uterine or ovarian, then you should ask your GP for a referral. The really good news is that bowel cancer screening really does work to reduce the cancer risk. In Lynch syndrome, specific guidelines have been developed, and these include colonoscopy, which can remove polyps before they can become a cancer. It should be done every one to two years, starting at age 25 or five years before the earliest bowel cancer. The Hereditary Cancer Registry, among other things, can provide reminders for this. It's important to note that screening doesn't work for ovarian cancers and isn't recommended for uterine or the rarer can cancers. For more information on why screening doesn't work for ovarian cancer, please see our ovarian cancer presentation.
So how do you reduce the risk for women with Lynch syndrome? Well, the only effective way is surgery, and this involves the removal of the uterus, which is called a hysterectomy, and both tubes and ovaries from both sides. This is normally performed laparoscopically and occurs around age 40. Here's a picture demonstrating the ovary, the fallopian tube, and the uterus. Lifestyle factors can have a big impact on all cancer risk, and this has been well documented in bowel cancer. Ways to reduce your risk are to consume a diet high in fruit and vegetables, particularly dark green leafy vegetables, that's also high in fibre. Exercise is important, and this should be moderate exercise, about 20 minutes a day, and a healthy body weight. Obesity increases cancer risk, especially for uterine cancer in women, and bowel cancer has been linked very strongly with smoking. So what should you do now? If you're concerned about your own or your family's history of cancer, please speak to your GP. There are guidelines available to help them determine if you should see a genetic oncologist or a hereditary cancer clinic, and they can provide the referral you'll need. So now you know how bowel or colorectal cancer develops. You know that there are important clues to an inherited cancer syndrome, and that these can include the number and types of bowel polyps, as well as the age of any polyps or bowel cancers. You know what Lynch syndrome is, and the cancers associated with it. And you understand the role of tumour testing in determining whether Lynch syndrome may be present. You understand that the risk of bowel cancer can be reduced by screening, and this may be a fecal occult blood test in somebody at average risk of bowel cancer, or regular colonoscopies, or even removal of the colon in people at very high risk. You know that women with Lynch syndrome should have risk-reducing surgery to protect against ovarian and uterine cancer. And you know that lifestyle factors such as a healthy diet, moderate exercise and a healthy body weight are important in reducing cancer risk. More information can be found on the Sydney Cancer Genetics website and also other videos are available on our YouTube channel. Information for both patients and doctors is available on the EVIQ website and for advice on bowel cancer screening for people at average risk of bowel cancer, please see the Australian Government website, Cancer Screening. Thank you.